The stage was set. 45,000 Mets fans packed City Field wearing orange, blue, and black. Many of them had paid $50 to park their car. The smoke filled the air. The national anthem was loud. The entire team was introduced. And then Max Scherzer, oh, that bulldog, oh, that winner takes the mound. And in a span of one half inning. Any good vibes that the Mets fans try to bring back up after choking, after blowing, after whatever you want to call it, after losing this division that they should have won. After losing that division, the Mets fans were there. They were loud. The Let's Go Mets were deafening. I could hear it through my TV screen. It was intense. And the very first pitch of the game, Jerks and Profar bloops that hit in the left field, shallow left field, right then and there. As soon as I saw that, I was filled with terror in my heart. I just had a sick feeling, and I know I'm not supposed to feel that way after one batter, but you know what? I've been rooting for this team since the late 1980s. I have been through enough crap where I just have a, mm, I have a sixth sense for knowing when the Mets are done, and they were done. Three batters later, Josh Bell hits the home run. It's 2 nothing, and with you, Darvish, coming to the mound, it may as well have been Bob Gibson in his prime. The Mets were never going to touch him, and they didn't. One wonderful run. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate the offense showing up. It's only the playoffs in front of your home crowd. And as upset as I should be at the offense, this comes down to one person, and it's Max Scherzer. Max freaking Scherzer, the Hall of Famer. This guy's going to the Hall of Fame? What a con he is. A con. I'll tell you what, Max, when you show up for Cooperstown years from now, don't count on any Mets fans showing up. It's going to be all national fans and Tiger fans. There won't be any orange and blue in sight. Because... $40 million the Mets had to pay you every last time to come to New York to lead this team to the promised land. You stunk up the bit against Atlanta, against that disgusting franchise, and then against the San Diego Padres. You can't get out of the fifth inning. You give up four home runs. One of them to Trent Grisham, hitting 184 this year. Trent Grisham? Are you serious? Max freaking Scherzer. He's going right up there on that on the wall of shame with Tom Glavin, who couldn't get out of the first sitting against, against the Florida Marlins at the end of 2007. Against when he couldn't get out of the first sitting opening day against the Cubs, he gave up hits to the first seven or eight hitters. This is Al Leiter in the 1999 NLCS when he couldn't get out of the first sitting against the Braves in game six. The Mets came back when they ultimately lost. Rod Darling in the 1988 NLCS, just the latest example of a supposed Mets ace who couldn't get the job done, and you knew from the beginning he wasn't getting the job done. But Scherzer, the Bulldog, getting paid $40 million. That, that is theft. That is absolute theft. Missing a quarter of the season with your oblique. And in the two biggest games of the year, he comes up like garbage. Pure garbage. 101 wins or not, this is deplorable. Deplorable baseball. If they can't get out of the wild card series against an 89-win Padre team, you know what? I don't give a damn who they get rid of in the offseason. They can get rid of Alonzo and I won't care at this point. This is unacceptable. The mix isn't working. This sucks. This sucks. And Steve Cohen with all your money, I don't care what you have to do. I don't care who you need to spend the money on. I don't, Billy Epler, you fail like a dog at the trade deadline. You couldn't have failed harder if you tried. This is unacceptable. The most disappointing 100-win team in baseball history. And even if they do manage to come back and win two straight against San Diego, 
Do you think they're winning one game against the Dodgers? <laughs> against the Dodgers. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'll tell you one other thing. Those fans who booed Max Scherzer as he stepped in shame off the mound, I got one thing to say to you guys. I'd have been right there booing with you. I don't want to hear from these holier-than-thou fans who said, no, you, oh, you can't boo, you can't boo. We're supposed to support the team. We're supposed to support the team. Shut up. This was an embarrassment. This was not Francisco Alvarez in his first week of Major League Baseball striking out in a big spot. It wasn't that. Okay, this wasn't some pitcher they just called up. It wasn't like they called up Eric Ors, who'd been in Syracuse all year to pitch uh, to, to pitch it, to pitch one inning, and he couldn't do it. This is a Hall of Fame pitcher, and he underachieved as badly as you could underachieve. He deserved every boo he got. Every last one of those boos, Max Scherzer took it on his shoulders, and he deserves it. Because he has a failure. A failure as a Met. A freaking failure. A failure. I just don't know what to say anymore. I don't know what to say anymore. 35 years as a Mets fan, I have seen a lot of exciting moments, but it never leads to the promised land. I've seen two World Series appearance, appearances. Both ended in five games. Five games. Can't even get to game six. And after a lot of years of futility, and there have been some long stretches of futility with this franchise, I'm going to try not to yell here. I'm, try I'm really, really trying, but I had to get some of that out. After th We were really envisioning as Mets fans sustainable success. I use that phrase a lot because I'm not interested in being a one-year wonder. But I see those pricks down in Atlanta signing all these young players for pennies, for pennies. Austin Riley, Michael Harris, they have the stupidest agent, Ronald Acuna, the stupidest agents of all time. The stupidest agents. They're paying for freaking minimum wage. Minimum wage they basically play for, by comparison to what the Dodgers play their players, what the Yankees pay their players. The Mets, on the other hand, yeah, they got a few prospects. They got a couple of guys who might be pretty decent. They might pan out. But look how many free agents are coming up this season. Brandon Nimmo, Edwin Diaz. Oh, you watch. Somebody's going to make him an offer, a huge offer, a five- or six-year offer. There's the two of them. Look at the pitch, Look at the rotation. You know Jacob's already going to opt out. He probably can't wait to go, go down to Atlanta and join them, as if that team couldn't be any more disgusting already. And then, and then Carlos Carrasco, Taiwan Walker, they're free agents. Chris Bassett can be a free agent as well. Right now, you're looking at a starting rotation next year of an over-the-hill, washed-up piece of garbage, Max Scherzer, whatever's left in his dead oblique, whatever's left in there. What, what else do you have? Tyler McGill? <laughs> okay, good. David Peterson? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, before the season, I predicted this team, this team to actually come in third place once Jacob got hurt. I really did. I didn't think they were going to play good defense. I didn't think they had the rotation depth, and I wasn't too sure about the lineup. You know what? They fit it. They still won 101 games, that, so they actually did overachieve considering what I actually had in mind for them. But then as we look back at the early part of the regular season, all those amazing wins they had, the rallies against St. Louis, against Philadelphia. They managed to win games they had no business winning. The, they overachieved. That's it. They overachieved. Other teams were beating themselves. The Mets would just take advantage of them. Whether it was like Miami throwing a, th throwing balls all over the place, baseballs all over the place, allowing winning runs to score. The Mets had, had some great moments, but I, I cannot recall a more undeserving 100-win team in the history of baseball. I and I feel bad for ripping my own team, but what else am I supposed to do? How how can you be happy with this? Getting the I mean, I've been thinking for the last six years, five years, six years, what it would be like to see my team back in the playoffs again. I was there in Wrigley Field when the Mets won the pennant. I spent my money, I went to Chicago, and I went to that game and had one of the best times of my life that night. 
I got to see my team win the pennant. And ever since then, it has been garbage. Just pure, it has been garbage and a, a little bit of a tease. But it has never led to anything sustainable. Look at the lineup from the 2016 wildcard game when TJ Rivera was batting fifth. You know, 2019, I mean, that was a pretty good lineup. But the injuries happened and Edwin Diaz was not the Edwin Diaz we have now. But is that that's just like the Mets. Our best weapon now is a pitcher that we can't even get in the game because we're never winning anymore. That that just sums it all right up, doesn't it? It just sums it the freak up. I really don't want to I don't want to curse on here. I'm, I don't want to do that on this on, on this channel. I don't. Um, what can so tomorrow is Blake Snell against Jacob the Grom. Yeah, uh, yeah, I wonder. Uh, yeah, let's. I hope Jacob. I hope your blisters healing up well. Hope you can throw the slider on the outside part of the plate because uh, newsflash: the Padres are going to be looking for it. If you leave one slider out over the plate, I guarantee you, Manny Machado is going to hit another ball over the center field fence. And who do the Padres counter with? Blake Snell, pretty good postseason pitcher. Plus, he's a lefty. The Mets are hitting two forty six against lefties this season. It is. Absolute dire straits right now for this franchise, not just for this year, but for the future. Because what the hell is there to look forward to? How are they going to be able to retool? And even if they have the money to retool, can we trust Billy Epler to, to do this? I have tried to be defensive of Billy Epler. You know, I was just like, well, who is there to get? Well, you know what? The bottom line is this I can't trust him anymore. I can't trust him because he did not put a good enough roster together. You had to find a way. You had to know with the veterans on this team, there may only be so many chances. This might have been their best chance to win a World Series. And now it is fading. It is all but vapor at this point. It is all but over. <sighs> we'll think about the offseason as it approaches. Um, I And I'm sure I'll have more thoughts as it, as it comes along. But you know what? It is just, an, uh, this should be bothering me the way that it is. But the bottom line is this. My heart is with this team. I have gained and lost friends over this team. Uh, <sighs> what a night. What a miserable, disgusting, pathetic night. Just like the whole month of September was for the Mets. And it's no different now that it's October. It's just disgusting. I'll see you back here with more content from the Wicker Chair.